Okay, this video is about stevia, the sweetener, and the title is, I guess, is stevia good for you? Stevia, like the plant name is stevia rebodnia, uh, reboticide, and steviol are sort of sweeteners that it makes. It's native to Paraguay and Brazil. It's been used, here's a good thing to know, it's been used for centuries in Paraguay as a contraceptive. It's about at least 100 times sweeter than sucrose. It's been used in the USA since about since 1995 or so. Um, it has generally regarded as safe status, okay? How did it get that? Um, it decreases fertility in both males and females, especially the research has been done mostly in rats. That's the only thing available. And then historical epidemiological type stuff. Um, so look at this paper from 1968, the contraceptive properties of stevia. It's been known to um, reduce fertility for at least, you know, about 60 days afterwards. So for two months after you eat it, uh, fertility is significantly reduced. Okay, um, and then, and, and it's not just, it's in male rats and in female rats. It's in both, okay? Um, and this is just another paper showing it, um, the infertility effect of stevia. I'm gonna show you a couple things here that are kind of interesting. Um, there's additional papers on, you know, and it's not just stevia. It, it's it's all of them. Actually, I forgot to include them in here. It takes I don't have the time, but saccharin, the sweetener, decreases fertility, and so does aspartame, and then so does um, stevia. So what I'm saying is, don't mess around with this artificial stuff. You know, remember Adam and Eve. What Adam and Eve could do, but keep your indoor heating and plumbing, is a way to stay healthy and keep your fertility, keep your health. Okay, here's another paper on stevia. Uh, showing that it uh, shrunk the testes. You know, honey, I shrunk the kids. Honey, I shrunk the testes here. Uh, chronic administration of stevia. It wasn't really chronic, just 60 days. And that shrunk the testes, shrunk the seminal vesicles, which store the sperm, you know, behind the prostate. It decreased sperm concentration. It decreased testosterone. You don't want this. Nobody, no guy wants this. And again, the problems were in both males and females. Okay. Now, oh, I did actually get some of the papers. Here we go. Here's just some of them. There's a whole bunch of them. Aspartame causing remarkable decreases in sperm parameters and testosterone, increased oxidative stress. So aspartame is toxic to your balls. Uh, saccharin is also uh, toxic. Reduction in sperm motility and sperm count diminished. And th there's a bunch of these other papers on saccharin and aspartame. I'm just giving you a sense of all this. And wait till you see what's coming next. The other one, this next slide makes me laugh. There we go. Okay, so after all that stuff, then here's the kind of papers. What happens is a, a product becomes profitable and then industry has to get involved. Industry needs to sell their stuff. So they go, if you're a scientist, you know, you're probably starving, okay? It's hard to get grant money. So you have to do something that makes a big company happy. So now these papers come out. And notice the dates. Remember, 1968, bad, infertility. Hundreds of years in Paraguay, it's a contraceptive. But now, with modern funding of science, it's a wonder drug. Stevia is uh, has an absence of harmful effects and it has interesting medicinal activities including anti-diabetic, anti-hypertensive, anti-inflammatory, anti-oxidant, anti-cancer. It's a miracle drug. Okay, and here's another paper, 2017, especially in these pharmacology journals. There's a way for them to get extra pharmacology stuff promoting, you know, these uh, like almost like supplement-like sweeteners. Here we go. Uh, let's see, what do they say? This one was also good. It's not teratogenic, it's not mutagenic, it's not carcinogenic. Um, it has therapeutic effects against cancer, against diabetes, against hypertension, <laughs> cystic fibrosis. Okay, that's what I mean by this is like a bunch of crap. You'll see this pattern coming. As soon as something becomes profitable, all of a sudden all these papers just come out of nowhere saying it's, it's a new miracle drug. Yeah, like caffeine is safe, okay? Look at caffeine. It decreases the blood flow to the brain while simultaneously increasing the metabolic activity of the neuron. You know, I talked about my neurovascular and coupling theory. Baseline, you should have coupled amount of oxygen glucose delivery and metabolic activity in the neuron. Caffeine drops the blood supply, drops oxygen, oxygen and glucose delivery while simultaneously uh, increasing the metabolic activity of the neurons because it increases glutamate transmission in the neuro, in, in the synapses of, let's say, the hippocampus, for example. So it's all, that's bad, all right? Um, especially on a long-term chronic basis as people get older and more fragile. So anyways, the point I wanted to make is the old traditional stuff shows a lot of problems with stevia. Now they're trying to rebrand it as good for you. I would stay away from this stuff, if you, especially if you're trying to have a baby. Um, I would definitely stay away from it.